Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today, and we're back with some latest space updates for you. We're to begin with progression and test campaign of Mechazilla arms, then we'll talk about SpaceX's progression on Transporter 3 and further upcoming missions, and we'll end with China's successful fusion reactor test. So let's start with the progression and the test campaign of the Mechazilla arms at SpaceX's orbital launch tower. From the first week of 2022, SpaceX teams are working quite fast and well to prepare themselves for the upcoming orbital flight test. Besides working on other pad improvements, they are at present specially focusing on various tests of the robotic arms, or popularly the robotic chopsticks, which will not only help in catching booster or starship out of the skies, but also help in stacking or de-stacking both the vehicles during launches and landings. The engineers had carried out the first minor test on the 3rd of January, followed by a major catch arm test on the 4th. At that time, they would made the Mechazilla carriage to rise to a certain height and perform movements of the arms. Another similar test was carried out a few days later with an additional swing test of arms, meaning they also tested the Starship fueling arm. And most recently, on the 9th of January 2022, Sunday, SpaceX carried out the largest test ever of the Mechazilla system. Chris Bergen of NASA Spaceflight tweeted, Mechazilla's chopsticks received extra attention on Sunday with what looks like a lifting bar fit check. Meanwhile, Booster 3 slice and dice operations continue. In this recent test, Mechazilla arms had successfully reached the optimal height needed to stack Starship over Super Heavy. As per reports in the Sunday test, the Mechazilla carriage, instead of lifting up a few meters, just as the earlier tests had done, had continued to travel upwards till it reached the optimal height. This was a step ahead of the basic calibrating and actuation tests. There were a few brief pauses in upward movement, but the arms ultimately reached the optimal height. During and after reaching the top, the arms simulated the procedure of lifting any Starship vehicle for stacking it on a Super Heavy booster, and it also carried out simulation of maneuvers needed to control a booster after catching it. For this simulated test, SpaceX workers mounted a large steel bar between the catch arms to work as a weight simulator. Just as a super heavy booster would sit on the robotic arms, in a similar way, each end of the steel bar had rested over both the catch arms on its small steel projections, which are also present on super heavy boosters. Normally, this small downward facing steel projection helps cranes to carry the heavy boosters and is durable enough to take on the entire weight of Super Heavy. In the tip of these steel projections, there are steel caps which have a width of almost a foot. According to SpaceX, the launch tower catch arms will grab the Super Heavy boosters by the steel caps. Reports further state that these steel caps are used to cover the powerful bearings present in the booster. The launch tower arms are planned to use that steel projections for increasing the efficiency of catching and maneuvering the booster. Presence of such steel projections in the simulated weight bar test further establishes the strength of those steel caps. The catch arms have two parallel screw rods that can move together to move the booster closer to or further away from the launch tower or move in opposite directions to rotate it if needed for adjustments. Though the arms are mostly focused for catching boosters, they too have a great deal of importance in the rocket stacking procedure. SpaceX can use giant crawler or tower cranes for the stacking procedure, but the arms have an advantage over cranes. Larger cranes are extremely susceptible to wind conditions and variation in wind speeds, and they are practically unreliable for operations during bad weather or high wind conditions. Specifically, the weather conditions in Boca Chica are, though beneficial to the routine and reliable operation of giant cranes, but delays occur often due to the weather. The use of robotic arms from a fixed launch tower for stacking the vehicles are much more reliable than any cranes. They are also suitable for all weather conditions, thus giving it an upper hand to carry out stacking procedures without causing any delay by weather conditions. According to reports, it seems that the simulation test was carried out in a successful way. 
it's expected that SpaceX teams may move on another such test sooner, adding more weight in the simulator steel bar. That weight may amount to nearly the weight of Starship and Super Heavy. It's also expected, after ensuring Catch Arm's reliability, SpaceX can use the Starship S-20 and Super Heavy B-4 for the stacking test itself. Now let's talk about SpaceX preparations for their upcoming third rideshare launch, Transporter 3. SpaceX, like their earlier busiest year, have started to prepare at a fast pace to keep scheduled launches on time. They really have a good start with the Starlink 4-5 launch on Thursday, January 6, 2022. That launch has sent about 49 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. That Starlink launch was carried out from the Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, and it marked the first orbital launch all over the world in 2022. And just within a week's time, SpaceX teams have another Falcon 9 launch upcoming, which is scheduled on the 13th of January. Named as Transporter 3 mission, this will be the third Falcon 9 launch dedicated to SpaceX's SmallSat rideshare program, which provides the world's most inexpensive launch cost to orbit. The busy schedule at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station is evident from the statement of Major Jonathan Zuhl, Director of Operations for the First Range Operations Squadron. He stated, The 2022 launch pace is going to be exceptionally busy, with up to five polar and seven total launches projected for the month of January alone. Report says that those five launches are meant for SpaceX and two are non-SpaceX. First one of them, i.e. Starlink 4-5, is completed and preparations for Transporter 3, a second polar launch, is underway. SpaceX has also confirmed another launch of Italy's CSG-2 Earth Observation Satellite on another Falcon 9 rocket in late January. It's expected that the remaining two Falcon launches will be two more Starlink launches. Out of the two non-SpaceX launches, one is ULA's Atlas V launch for deploying Space Force's USS F-8 mission for the U.S. military by the 21st of January, and the second is Astra's first Cape Canaveral Rocket 3 launch in January 2022. Transporter 3 is scheduled to launch no earlier than 10.25 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, January 13th. In the earlier two transporter launches, SpaceX has totally launched around 220 small satellites of various companies, universities, or startups. Following the same path, Transporter 3 will also have a small satellite count of 80 to 90. Report says that Transporter 3 will deliver about 44 Super Dove Earth Observation spacecraft to Planet Labs. Transporter 3 will significantly mark the first land landing of a Falcon booster in more than six months. This will also be the first of the four transporter launches planned for the year 2022. We'll now wrap up with China's Artificial Sun Fusion Reactor Test. Recently, an experimental Chinese nuclear fusion reactor broke through the earlier record of France's Tor Supra Tecomic in 2003, after it superheated a loop of plasma to temperatures which is approximately five times hotter than the sun. Earlier in France's experiment, the plasma in a coiling loop had remained at high temperature for about 390 seconds. The core of the actual sun has a temperature of 15 million degrees Celsius. But China's experimental advanced superconducting tecomic East experiment has maintained a temperature of 70 million degrees Celsius, which is almost five times hotter. China's experiment ran for about 1,056 seconds, breaking France's record. Earlier in mid-2021, East had successfully remained at 120 million degrees Celsius. This success is a significant step in the creation of a source of long-term clean energy. Gong Zhanzhou, a researcher at the Institute of Plasma Physics of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, who headed this experiment, stated, The recent operation lays a solid scientific and experimental foundation towards the running of a fusion reactor. Report says that East will cost China about a trillion dollars or more till the completion of the experiment by June 2022. Sources state that this experiment is currently testing out technologies for a future, much larger fusion project. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER. 
As estimated, the first viable fusion reactor can be completed in the United States by 2025. A British company, Tecomic Energy, expects that by 2030 they'd be able to commercially generate electricity from fusion. China is also working to develop nuclear fusion power and is planning to complete a new Tecomic by the early 2030s. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.